What up, everybody? Shanghai Pete here for Degreelessness, your very good buddy in the mix. And today, we're going to be going over the recent video dropped by the RE4 Remake devs for many reasons, really, but primarily because we like to torture ourselves over here, and of course, by extension, you guys as well. And also, I mean, what the fuck else are we going to do while waiting for that goddamn demo? But in seriousness, I do think it's important to check this one out because as skeptical as I think we all probably rightfully are about this, it would be naive of us to assume that the game isn't going to dominate most of the year. And as such, we need to take it seriously, at least for now. Plus, I mean, what if it's awesome? That would be pretty sick. I'm always down for a pleasant surprise. And to join us on this joyous journey today, another pleasant surprise. Please welcome the filthy, the fine, Uptown Bobby himself. What's up, Bobby? Hello from the Bobby side. <laughs> All right, you ready to check this motherfucker out? I'm super excited. All right, let's take a look. And we're greeted with Game Informer. You know it's gonna be fucking fire. <laughs> what do you see, Game Informer? <laughs> fucking Christ. All right, so who do we have here? We have Kazunori Kadoi and Yasuhiro Ampo. Game director, game director and I guess regular director. And yeah, I'm not really sure what the difference is. I don't know who's more senior here. And collected the team's That's opinions. interesting that they got the whole team together. Oh wait, should we be pausing? The consensus was that while it was still a masterpiece, looking at today, there's still aspects we can improve upon. Realizing that, we were convinced. All right, so right here, <laughs> it's funny that they they had the wherewithal to be to notice that there were things that could be improved, but the things that they selected to improve were not the things that I think most people. I mean, sure, some of them, right? But it's like, well, that's what this video is going to be about is them showing off some of the things that they did improve. And what I think is really interesting about this is that they specifically said they collected the team's opinions. I like the idea that they got a group of people together, devs who probably many of them grew up on this game, because if they're in their 30s, they probably were, you know, about even if these devs are in their 30s, they were in, like teens, late teens when RE4 originally came out. So, oh, my God, these, that's so fucked it, up. They've if they're in their 20s through 30s, these devs have grown up with RE4 and have had time with it. And even if they haven't, they are now playing it and having the great. Well, look frame at these of guys. How old do you think these from. motherfuckers are? Um, I think these dudes are probably in their early 40s. I would say so too. I, 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 agree I think with they're that. probably in their early 40s, which would suggest they the were. The guy in on there. the left might be a little like mid to late later 40s, but the guy on the right, I, early to mid 20s. Um, when they came out, that they when when they came out. So you know, sure. I think it's just interesting that they're collecting people's opinions that, rather than coming in being like, "This is what we're doing," like this is what Capcom said. And I think that I that mean, reflects as a really good, exciting de design strategy. I, I, I it. It certainly sounds nice. It sounds nice. It sounds nice. Let's see how it shakes Whether out. Whether or not that's really how it went down, and it was not just, hey, get the fuck over here. The head of the department says, looking at the numbers from RE2 and RE3 remake, we need to do another one. And guess what? Right. It's RE4. Go fucking We do also it. don't know who the team is. Yeah. So. The team doesn't necessarily but, but mean I do, like I do the like QA your attitude. Testers. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's the, give them the, the benefit of the doubt. The team could be like... Let's say, sure, it really was a sincere effort of passion on the, on the part of these people. They really were like, let's talk to the team and figure out the best thing to do. And you know what? If we don't have enough ideas on how to improve it, we won't do it. It's nice to imagine that that was really a possibility, but let's be honest, I don't think there was ever an option for them not to do this. I think even in Corpo let's 2023... Be, let's be clear. Yeah, right, let's keep going. I want to see... What, I want to see this. Let's Let's get some goodies yeah, okay. here. All right. Design philosophy wise, I'm optimistic right, based so on those let's, kinds again, of things. Again, I agree. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt that they were not convinced until they talked to the team. And then okay. they were okay. convinced. And then they were convinced. Okay, sure. His, sure, sweater, sure, his sure. sweater convinces me. <laughs> we'll go with that. It's very non threatening. I mean, like, this looks fucking fire. I mean, you can't. Jesus. Dude, look at the detail on that fucking bitch's face. That's crazy. <laughs> Has a very one of a no, all right. So <laughs> it has a very one of a kind control scheme. Now <laughs> that was true when it came out because, as I believe we noted while we were originally playing that game and then playing through Mercenaries mode, a lot of people don't remember this. There was not an, a third person over the shoulder style either camera scheme or gameplay style when this motherfucker came out. If there was, it was very rudimentary. But this shit basically fucking created that entire genre. So it certainly was a one-of-a-kind control scheme when it came out. Like, Gears of War directly is a result of this game and its fucking success. If this game in Mercenaries mode had not popped off, had not popped off the way that it did, you would not have gotten Gears of War and pretty much countless 
or every single fucking third person action game since then. Like they definitely pioneered it, but at this point, well, it's, it's far from a one of a kind if, control. If I may, I think what you should look at here is what they're saying. What I think this is is uh, in a very Japanese professional way, a backhanded compliment. Is this a humble brag? No, it's a backhanded compliment. Which is they're saying they're saying it was a very unique control scheme. So that is one of the first things we looked at updating. What they're saying <laughs> is unique quote 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 yeah. quote quote when really what they're oh, saying oh, is uh, so why, why else would that be one of the first things they'd look at updating unless what they're saying is it was unique meaning what they're saying is at the time it was very unique but it doesn't work at all today so they are this is a very very professional way of giving it respect while being like it sure. sucked ass so we threw it out immediately well see that's an interesting <laughs> thing is because the idea of the third person over the shoulder was good but the way it was implemented in the original one absolutely could use some fucking work you right. couldn't move and aim and even when you did you could only use that one stick and for some reason the speed that it tracked your reticle across the screen was like moriasis Right? So oh, it weird. like took forever to get the reticle from like the lower right hand corner of the screen to sweep it up to like the upper left or whatever. It was so slow and it was un it was ungainly. Is that a, is that a, a saying? Yeah. 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 Okay. So anyway, all right guys, continue to talk about this one of a kind control scheme, please. <laughs> right. That's a game we felt we could do even more if we remade it today. Meaning, we felt we could make even more money if we reissued this for yet the 1700th fucking time. Right. Sure, great. That sounds awesome. We identified a few elements. And that's where they started. I mean... But they're showing me a shotgun now, so they're making me excited. The editing is good. <laughs> True. Boom! All right, great, awesome. Get the fuck rid of the quick time events. QTEs they, are not. Bad. Oh Wait, my god! <laughs> let's, let's just pause. Again, more Japanese polite. Yeah, very, very, very nice. And they, they say more things. Like, QTEs are not popular in today's games. That's a great way of saying we realized what an awful design choice this was yeah. like a decade ago and stopped doing it. And altogether. we've been cringing at it ever yes. since. And we couldn't wait to get the fuck rid of it. We, we are great. We, we are able to now to make an act of contrition. Fantastic! <laughs> I fuck with that. No, they are not. Look, he even has a smirk on his face. <laughs> we really did not think players today would enjoy them. Yeah, I yeah, don't. I, yeah, you, you, know, you, you picked right. up on that, did yeah. you? <laughs> Brilliant. You guys really are top tier devs. But rather than just taking that out. them out, they thought about how they could do something to implement. Oh, God. Oh, see, here's... If we want a knife fight in the remake, how could we do it? Here's an idea. Any way that does not involve creating this weird, muscle-bound, 80s action hero trope of a guy from Leon's past that no one knows anything about. We're not going to explain his origins. We're just going to hint at them. And it's... And he's not even... He, it would be different if he was an interesting character. That was like, oh shit, that's a very interesting uh, and mysterious past that he's got. I can't wait until they slowly unravel more of that. I'm on the edge of my seat to find out more about Krauser. No. Is, are we litigating Krauser now? I'm ready to litigate Krauser. If I mean, you I think, like, Krauser. here he is. He's on the screen. Is this is the time to litigate I mean, Krauser. Here's a great example, right? This is a big conversation. Ada, you know who we could have had a knife fight with? Fucking Ada. Is <laughs> Dude, he could have had a knife fight with fucking Ada. Well, you did not need... I, I'm fine. Like, we had to ask if we wanted to have a knife fight in the remake. How could we do it? All right, a knife fight, in principle, I'm not... I don't object to the idea of a knife fight. On one hand, though, if you want... How, how do you get rid of quick time events, but then also say, I want a knife fight? Like, is there a way you can do that without annoying quick time slash parry mechanics? Well, I don't we know. That? When and where did rookie cop Leon Kennedy <laughs> learn spec ops level knife fighting? Where <laughs> did he meet Major Krauser? When did he serve in the military between his very first day at Raccoon City PD <laughs> that he never actually got to? He didn't even get orientation. You're a police officer with zero experience on the force. He never even <laughs> got like his like welcome package at all. <laughs> yeah. He never got orientation. 
Like, never. They never showed him around the break room. Nothing. He had to show himself around the break room, and he was not in good condition. No. Like, not at all. So, at what point was he in the military with this guy? I still, to this day, don't know where or when it was ever explained, but it is not in a fun way like Metal Gear Solid with Snake and Gray Fox, where, no. where their implied past is so exciting and crazy. And it, it immediately crazy. hooks you. Just hooks the you. stupid codec conversation and the few lines from Gray Fox when you... Just when you're introduced to him, it immediately makes you be like, yo. I mean, it also helps that Gray Fox was an invisible cybernetic ninja, yeah. and this is Krauser with a beret. But so, like, why couldn't it I have, mean, why could it not, within the world of Resident Evil, instead of cybernetic, it could easily have been some kind of, what do they call them, BOWs? He could yeah, have yeah, easily yeah. had some kind of a viral a viral genetic therapy. Doesn't he at the end? Doesn't he like mutate or something towards the end? Or am I, am um, I... he has some, he does have some sort of super. Maybe he does. I think he does mutate at the end in the final fight. But whatever, it's so dumb. The point is, it's it's never made clear what their relationship is. And I feel like turn like when did Leon turn into an action star? And where how does he know this guy? Krauser, they never explain it. Krauser makes no sense in the story, and I wish they had cut him out and replaced him with something that made more Dude, sense. You seriously, if you want in a knife fight that bad you did not need to create this ridiculous living plot hole to a uh to hand well, a I knife mean, to. So the whole thing is living plot because I still don't understand why they're sending Leon in what's essentially like I mean, a taxi yeah. cab to go find the president's daughter alone. Like who it why in the middle of like some European forest. He's not even a former cop. He had maybe all right, so can we assume that Leon had never served on any police force before, or was he a transfer for someone else to RPD and no, had they served specifically for a time? talk about he's how he's a rookie cop and it's his first day. But is it his first day serving as a cop? I don't straight I, out of some yeah, academy. Yeah, yes, that's what I, I, I suspect. Okay. Because so, I don't think they would refer to him as a rookie cop if he was coming from a position on another force. So he had police academy training and one really bad day, and somehow from there he got into spec ops. Yeah, like how how is that? I mean, when, I was about to say how is that a resume for getting into like the Navy SEALs and how or much Green Berets? further in time? But is I mean, this? but that's, on the other hand, it's like, well, I did survive this shit, but but then again, who the fuck knows? Like. No one knows what he did. It's not like he's some famous guy for surviving Raccoon City. Like, barely anybody even knows who about he, that. Yeah. Who picked him up? Who does he even work for? Dude, how much time has passed between this and... I think they say in the intro to RE4, but I don't remember. I'm, I'm, well, regardless, but I'll tell you this. It's not more than 10 years. No fucking way. It's not more than 10 years. Regardless, it seems insane to me that Dude, like... Dude, he's like a Green Beret he, commando He has this. This, this whole ridiculous. relationship. He's suplexing with, motherfuckers and shit. The, like, dude, you right. were not suplexing zombies in Raccoon City, No. Dude. No, he, dude, he's got this this deep relationship with his former major who's gone crazy and is the like, biggest dude, old trope. We're supposed to care about this. We're supposed to care. I, I, I don't, and I don't I, like I, Krauser, and I think it really takes me out of it because he doesn't fit. I don't like Wesker, so I certainly don't like Krauser. And at least Wesker, they made him at least fit in the scenario where he was presented. Yeah, and he's right? been in since day one yeah. also. Dude, this Krauser is... Krauser shows up for no reason in, like, the second act you of this game. You know what we need in our dark European horror rainy forest? A... A rogue green beret yeah. fucking extra so from the Sylvester like a, a Stallone movie in 1985. Fight. Why? It doesn't fit. Fuck. All right. Continue this There's shit. There's no stakes. Look at this. But anyway, with that said, parry system, hell yeah. Awesome. I mean, that's fine. That's fine. That's cool. They do attack with I love that they were like, hey, why don't we oh, just... Oh, that's interesting. They're cool. talking about how parry is a core mechanic. That's yeah. interesting. That's very interesting. <laughs> See, now here, you, first of all, like, why is the rain like a cum shower? Like, I really, I how did you I, not learn your lesson from the G, the horrible GTA trilogy fucking I was quote unquote the remake? Same thing. Well, is this a PS5 exclusive or PS4 and PS5 exclusive? It's PS4 and PS5. Well, that's why. Oh, that's maybe, yeah. Because they're trying to get the great, great graphics for everything else, so they make the rain look like crap. <laughs> Because PS5 can do better rain than that. For a gun, the only thing you can do with fire with. There's a, fire of, yeah, there's a variety of actions you can perform with the knife. Like, from slashing stabbing, things to stabbing slicing, things. Slicing. <laughs> like. Uh, cutting. I mean, God. This, <laughs> yeah. Dabbing. Poking. Oh, that's the fucking 
this is the scene where you hold off the dudes from the house of Louise. You could lick a knife. Ultimately, games evolved so much since the original was, was released. I mean, I don't know if I would say evolved. Well, in I, terms I, of quality I, of I life, would, I would absolutely. say games have less evolved as your ability to harvest data about what cells have evolved. I think quality of life in games, as well as even basic controls, have evolved drastically. If you consider that even twin stick controls, I think their ability to target this. customers it has evolved. I don't. I don't think games really have evolved. Like, if you think about it, sure, they're talking about adding a parry mechanic. Oh God, how revolutionary! But like. This game, if you strip back the graphics, it essentially looks like a game from 2005. You are doing things in this game that you did in games in 2005. They're gonna, so don't tell me this. Be, don't tell me it's fucking evolved. It's like, quality do they look cooler? Of life stuff. They look cooler. There's some quality of life things. Fine, great. But don't try to sell me on this idea that they fucking evolved. This is a 2005 game. Games, I would even go so far as to say games in general have not advanced much beyond 2005. No, I agree with that totally. No, I, that I, I completely agree with, but it's, it's, I also, it's to, small quality of life clear, improvements. I don't that think is, they necessarily to have to. I don't think they necessarily have to evolve, but it's one thing. No, they've hit a ceiling in a big way. They've hit a ceiling in a big way, and I don't, like, you don't need to say, like, oh, they've evolved. I mean... It's a better. It's well. It's a, it's a the flashier, graphics technology has evolved. It's a flashier thing for him to say. We're still using the exact same controllers. So tell me how much they've evolved. If I'm still using four face buttons, triggers, and two fucking sticks. It's I mean, a flashier thing for him to say than we added a thing so that it'll give you hints on where to go next. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's what's going on. It's like we we added these. We added the the, the ability to switch your weapons on a ring menu mid game. That's it's it's more flashy to say it has evolved than to say that. I mean, sure, maybe maybe I'm being too, maybe I'm nipping, maybe I'm being too hard on him. All right, tell me, and those tell are me, big quality of life. Tell me more about some of the aspects of the original that you feel were outdated. Oh great! <laughs> Look at this. Look at this stunning evolution in gameplay. Yeah. Oh, this is interesting. So tell me about the systems. All right. So now, instead of just slashing and, and shooting things, you can blow stuff up and kick them. Like, now, this is cool. I want to see how advanced this, like, is. Stealth kills. That's fucking cold. That's cold. I do like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, I don't like. I want to see. I, I like want to see how practical that is. I like to go in blasting, but I don't think this problem with stealth. I also they, to say, like enemies can alert as well. That's very like, cool. Like enemies don't aren't immediately aware of your presence. I'm very interested to see how how present that uh, that stealth aspect is. Is it like a gimmick where there's like six times where you can sneak up on an enemy or is there an actual enemy AI system that alerts that you can... <laughs> I, love I think they talk I about that. this. Do they really? See, look, to make sure they're, they're talking about if there's an Oh, strategize around you see an enemy first. Or if they see you first and they start attacking. See? That's very cool. Oh my god, a stealth weapon! Yeah, that's cool. Oh shit! So let's keep in mind, this American police officer is- Look, look at this. For instance, you could try taking down all the item, all the enemies without ever being found. That makes me- that to me sounds like there might be a possibility to do a no alerts playthrough. That would be really cool. Um, if if the stealth system is that evolved, yeah. where you can do a, like something like a Deus Ex yeah. or some shit like that, different Metal Gear games. I wonder if they'll rate can, you on like number times. Yeah, alerted, how many you yeah. number of times you alerted and shit. Yeah, if dude, if this that's what I'm talking about. If the stealth system is that advanced, which I think the chances of it being that advanced are kind of low, but what they are saying at least at least leaves room for that. If the stealth system is that advanced. I will be seriously excited for that I'm, yeah. because that really is that would extend to the entire game and the way you play through the entire game. If you can do an actual stealth run through the whole game, that right there does provide you a legit, completely new way to play the whole fucking it game, does. and that is fucking cool. Which is cool. I it's do not, like that. It's not for me, but it's cool. 
For me, I, I want to go in and just blast you. I mean, to in be clear, face. I'm being aspirational and here. Steamroll. Like, I like to go. I'll go in and I'll be like, I'm gonna go in and fucking sneak around and kill these motherfuckers. And the reality is, I get caught after like my third attempt and then just break out a machine gun. Where's my shotgun? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's highly aspirational. There goes your weed pipe. So, that's very cool. You could try taking down all the enemies without ever being found. I want to see how many combat encounters. That is a viable. Well, I mean, I just for. think the enemies being aware or not aware of you is cool. That that's even that part that's of the even AI. a thing. Yeah, because it's, their AI wasn't that. Like, the possibility for them to not notice you. I'm pretty sure they always noticed you as soon as you yeah, were like the, possi on the possibility. The possibility for them. them to not notice you didn't even exist. I think back they then. always. I think it was just like if you're on screen with an enemy, they know you're there. Exactly. If yeah. you're like in their zone, they know you're there. I think. For there's a limit to the knife use. But yeah, it's the knife can break. Which I don't know how it doesn't mean uh, unclear if you pick up another knife or if you repair it somehow. Let's see if they talk about that. In turn, oh, good. So this is a quick turn, good. But even so, it wasn't that easy to look behind you because that was difficult to fight behind you. So now what they're saying because you can turn the camera fast, they made the enemies have more challenging AI. I, I, I like the, I hate, see the gun menu. Dude, Do you see I'm the gun menu? I'm hesitant to say it, but like I'm kind of impressed a little bit by what I'm hearing. All right, we'll pause this real quick. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, hello, children. Let me tell you about the story of when an American came to my town and <laughs> killed all my friends and family because we were a little bit sick. He shot me in the fucking face. He shot me in the face. He killed my abuela. <laughs> <laughs> she, she was 105, and she'd been a freedom fighter. and Took a 9 millimeter round to the fucking face, and that was that. This beautiful man shot Abuela right between the eyes. <laughs> USA number one, baby. <laughs> You're probably wondering how I got here. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this is. <laughs> okay, so here's here's my problem. All right. What you just said, it, what you just said is very important to me. What you just said was like, this is getting very exciting, etc. So my issue here is... I wish that they had taken all these new systems and insights from that from reviewing RE4, arguably the best in the, the new age of the franchise to this day. Why could they not do all this and just make a new scenario and a new game, RE9, where let's take it back to third person, let's take everything we learned, make Leon the lead, but make a new story and a new sequel. Why does it have to be a remake? Why can't they take all these, why can't they take something that they know works and then improve it a little bit and then put it in a new scenario? Why? Other than because people love RE4 and they can use nostalgia because we're at 20 years now, which is that nostalgia window and they can get the people on the nostalgia dollar. It's just a fucking guap up and there's no reason. Like that is- You answered your own question. Because they can, it. because they can. Because it's, just, it's a fucking guapa. Uh, it's just a bummer because like this is going to be great. I'm excited to play it and it's awesome. But how awesome would it be if it also were a new story where you could add yeah. more to your life keep, and your brain and our thinking in, and our culture? Yeah, but keep in mind, you are imagining that this is an either or scenario. It's not. It's both. There will be an RE9 and it will be an improvement from RE8 and an improvement for this. And there will also be this because like you said, it is a guapa. We, I hope they can make both. And so they will. I mean, to be clear, I'm already impressed. First of all, we were all blown away by the RE2 remake. I can't, I still to this day, I can't believe how good that actually ended up being. It's fucking insane that they actually managed to make it good. I can scarcely believe it. But then we saw what happened when they tried to cash in on it a little too quickly with fucking RE3 minor hassle, right? So I'm already impressed that. For those for those longtime listeners, you'll remember my first concern about this was that they were gonna fucking half-ass it. They were gonna cut that motherfucker in half. And now a lot of people, I mean, I know you specifically do not agree with me, but one of my favorite things about the RE4 or oh, the original RE4 was how long it was. I loved how much time you got to spend in the game and how many fucking areas and shit there were. I love that. So naturally, first thing I thought was that they're gonna fucking FF7 remake this motherfucker. And they're gonna split it into two or more parts as an excuse because, oh, it's so long and like, you know, it would take us a long time to make the whole fucking thing. So I'm immediately impressed that not only did they not do that, but they've said they're including fucking everything, right? So right off rip, it's not even nearly as much of a blatant cash grab as RE3 Minor Hassle was. 
So that's impressive, right? But you keep in mind, they're only doing this because they know how... It's like the fucking Fight Club scene, right? They know how much it's going to cost them to do this. They know how much money they can guarantee to make from it. And they can do this with a whole separate smaller team while the some other bunch of fucking schmoes makes Ari fucking 9 and they can have both. This is not an either or scenario. I think it's a blatant cash grab. I'm excited for it, but oh, I, think, I think it's a blatant cash grab. Of I course. think that it's a, it's it's lower effort overall and thus lower lower if investment it, to create If it wasn't a blatant scenario. cash grab, then what we would be looking at right now is a video about the fucking uh, would be a video about RE9. Right. If it wasn't blatant cash. And grab. it's also very optimistic to think that RE9 is going to be good when traditionally they have shown that they're able to do like two or three good ones and then a shit one. Two or three good ones and then a shit one. It's all the way back from day one. <laughs> one and two, great. Three, not so much. Code Veronica, shit. Four, awesome. Five and six. I mean, I remember enjoying five, but I'll go ahead and concede this. No, I never I played six, but it got terrible Remember, reviews. I only enjoyed five because it was a co-op game. Other than that, it was horrible. You take out the co-op, and I would not have fucking... I would not have played it. Wow. I didn't even beat it. Wow. I didn't even beat. I, got I did. To, the final I, battle's ridiculous. I got ridiculous to the part where Chris is punching events, the fucking boulder, and me and whoever I was playing with, we got frustrated. We were like, this game is not good enough to work through the frustrations then at the end of it. Seven and eight, great. RE Remake 2, great. RE Remake 3, while well, I didn't play it, obviously a, it not as well received as RE2 make. And now that brings us to... Well, Village came out after that, but and like, the Village is great. But I'm, this is going to be great, but I think it's, it's, it's really optimistic to think that they're then going to do it well with nine... Like, I think maybe that's why they're doing this, because they're like, oh, God, what do we do with the story now? We have to keep weaving this ridiculous, maybe the, lost-like story that, that has no That is no also ending. a possibility. We don't know what to do with the story this, ever. They might just be buying time with this. Yeah. Right? They're like, we, we miraculously, we managed to make not just seven good and revive the series, but we also made eight really good, and we have no fucking idea what we're going to well, do for nine. because they ended Ethan's story. So in order story. to buy us some fucking time, they did, and rightfully so, I might add. But in order to buy us some time, let's just fucking slap RE4 into that fuck into the RE engine, you know? Right. And fucking bickety bam. Is this the same engine as RE2 make and RE3 make? I don't. I don't know for like sure, improved? but I would. In, I would assume. It so. probably is. I would assume so, considering how fucking great both it's of those great games engine. look to yeah. this day. Yeah. Probably all they would probably have to do souped up would a be adjust bit. the fucking would be adjust the camera slightly, but you know, barely anything. All right, let's continue. So they don't want players to do the exact same thing. It's not really... Uh, I mean... Made various arrangements. Okay, one of the two. Seems like a... Throwing shade to The Last of Us. Good. Last of Us deserves shade. Yeah. Sure. Sure. I don't think that's accurate. I think you're shooting Ganados and Illuminados, the exact same dudes for the whole game. Yeah. Oh, but here, this is cool. Ooh. And what did they upgrade? Max health? Yeah, dude, right. you could, like, I remember tracking down all the golden feasts to get a fucking, like, a speed upgrade or something. Right, right. And it was look. a whole bunch of stats that you could do. They wanted to do something. That, see, this is another thing that I love to hear. This is very cool. This is very interesting. I don't care some, like, the parry system is so, is, it's slightly interesting, but stuff like an actual, but the parry system is not going to change how you play the game. Things like significant stat upgrade opportunities and an option to do an entire stealth playthrough, that would change how you play but the game. You don't think a core combat mechanic upgrade but will it doesn't change, change how, you, how you play the game you still go into a fucking uh, combat encounter and you fucking kill it the changes enemies. how you play the game in terms of the combat it, ch it changes how you it interact you with the combat, combat but you're still going up to the dudes and fucking you know killing them if you, you know? don't have to run I mean, away is it a really that much of a, a gameplay we'll difference we'll if see instead of fucking running up to them when they're stunned and hitting x to suplex them instead sometimes you hit x to parry their attack it depends on if you could parry every attack or not uh, so if then you could, you could do things every like attack, you could do like no a, hit runs. Like a and great shit. Dark Souls player, if you could just stand there and tank enemies, that's a good point. Parry and stab, parry and stab, parry and stab. If you could just like parry, shoot, parry, shoot, parry, shoot. That's or a if good you point. Super sick, like Sekiro style. You could just wreck them. I think it could significantly change the game for like speed runners and really high level dudes. If you've got to fight somebody to just keep parrying, sure. that's a good point. Maybe. That's a good point. 
Oh, here he is. Here's the imposter. He looks yeah. great, but sounds like an imposter. Does he really? Oh. I mean, it's a good voice, but it's not the voice. And the fact that they have not had, had him say, what are you buying? I dude, if they show some tone deafness dude, from your audience. Dude, if we don't get a what are you buying? What are you selling? What are you selling? <laughs> Look at this. Wait, wait. All right. All right. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Go back. Go back. This is important in the part you'll love, and I'm babbling over it. What? Back up a little. Back up. Uh, one more time. Okay, fine. Just play from here. They're talking about how it's how it's survival horror, but they want to see more into the horror side. Dude on the left is nodding off. <laughs> he looks like he's half asleep. Who made the horror? I mean, I'm always in favor of making look at what something we're looking scarier. At. Like, yeah, just this the vibe is great. Environment is. I also scary. liked it. It's it's actually scary and, and not just blue. brown and no, blurry. It's like blues. I like the color grading. It looks like much village. More. The color grading is much better in this. The village is a masterpiece, and they're learning yeah. for village. <laughs> I'm so scared. I'm peeking around the yeah. corner. At least, see, that's actually that's impressive. <laughs> they say they recognized the uniqueness of the, of the controls and shit from the first one, but they knew that in today's landscape, it wouldn't be possible to duplicate that. Thank God. Thank God that sometimes devs are aware of what cannot be done and what should not be done. Yeah, there's... Right. You know... Thank God you you are aware, miraculously, that it wouldn't be possible to duplicate that. Thank you for not fucking trying. They're, they're saying that, like, all the things about this game that were so revolutionary are now commonplace today. Yeah, and so today, they had to work on other we things. We are in which a is place cool. today, as we were saying, in terms of hitting a ceiling, we're in a place today where that level of innovation is not necessarily possible at this time. Yeah. So instead, they had to think, like, outwards rather than upwards, which Thank is great. You. Yeah. Look Good. at this guy. Look at that dude with his head, like, That's on awesome. the side. I love it. Awesome. He's not a zombie. <laughs> and you, when he shoots him, you can see the blood hit. Watch. Dope. Ooh. You can see the blood hit where you shoot him. That's cool. What is that I hand? Mean, I have to like. I have to say, I'm I'm actually kind of impressed at the amount of insight that these guys seem to really have about this. It's fantastic. Like they really clearly understand. Please enjoy. Like, yeah, yeah. Please don't watch the video and call it a day. <laughs> well, don't worry about that. We're actually um, we're please ruthlessly critiquing. All right, yeah. great. So. Takeaways, Bobby. Um, I think that they clearly really understand Resident Evil 2 and really appreciate it. Four. I think they understand Resident Evil 4, thank you, and really appreciate it. I think that they also understand the game climate today and they understand the difficulty of the task. It sounds like the improvements are really, really awesome. I still would love for this to be applied to a new property, but I'm a huge RE4 fan. And this got, this video of everything I've seen got me more psyched because I yes. know the design philosophy yeah. is there. That's, that is my main takeaway, is that after watching this, I actually feel like these people know what they're doing yes. and they care about doing it well, which is something that I don't think is as common as we would like in the games industry these days. I agree. But these guys actually, I mean, I don't know about, so much about that guy on the left. He seemed to be half asleep and only really no, perked up dope when he shit, was talking though. about the fucking knife. He was saying knife. dope shit too, though. He really we is we into know. Krauser, though. He seemed to be really into Krauser, and I find that to be, you know, that makes me a little skeptical. We didn't know who judgment. was talking when because it didn't say, which I think is a mistake on a Game Informer's part. Shocker, Game Informer. Nice job as usual. Not, <laughs> nice not, job not, as not, usual, Game not Informer. Not like color coding your subs or doing anything like, great. Thanks a lot for telling us. <laughs> a lot of respect you have for these two developers to, to try to, to differentiate fair, they them did, in any they, way. When the, when, the, uh, when the video was not on them and was on gameplay, they would put the name next to the sub. Oh, they did? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right, fine. I retract that game before. I clearly wasn't paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's again, that's my main takeaway is that I'm surprised that these guys were actually really aware of the amount of things that they are aware of. Unfortunately, one of the main things they were not aware of was how ridiculous the overall plot was and how fucking stupid Krauser is. Yes. Which is a shame. However, you know, it is really about fucking gameplay and vibes first. And with the exception of fucking Krauser, I feel like the vibes were there. And the dude, if you can, if it, it, if it is possible to attempt whole stealth runs of RE4, even if it's just the village section or something, that's fucking cool. I think it's notable that in none of the media of this game that they have shown the little person in the pirate hat. 
that you have to <laughs> yeah, kill that's very in this interesting. game. The little person that in the you have to hat. murder in this game. I think it's convenient that I believe <laughs> yeah. they've heard, played the voice, but have not shown it. I, yeah. I wonder how that's going to play today. Yeah, they seemed eager to talk about Krauser, not so much about the guy, the, the, the child Salazar? in the pirate hat. Is that Salazar? I think that's Salazar, yeah. But, I mean, which just goes to show you that the plot is absolutely fucking ridiculous. Let's send a single dude whose only qualification is managing to not get eaten in Raccoon City. For one and day. And let's send him in a fucking glorified Uber to a dark forest in Europe by himself with one person on a radio in his ear to go find the president's daughter. I mean, just on its face, it's fucking ridiculous. In reality, <laughs> dude, can you imagine what would actually happen if like someone in Chechnya kidnapped Biden's fucking daughter? We would glass that entire country in half a fucking second without even blinking. The idea, no, let's send one guy. It's only the president's daughter that was kidnapped. We don't have secret service or anything for that. Like, I don't know. That Where's aside. the Spanish government trying to assist here? Why aren't they sending their yeah. entire military to go save the president's daughter of yeah, the United States? Why is this States? a black book operation? Like, it's in, it's absolutely insane with one person in his ear and, like, a gun with a few bullets. <laughs> And they're like, go, go save, save the, the president's, president's daughter. Yeah. Good luck in Lithuania. Where's the <laughs> secret service? They're just in Spain. And I don't know why they won't. Maybe Wait, is it actually, it's, it, is it been said it's actually in Spain? The only country in Europe where people speak Spanish like that is Spain. It's Spain. Mm, For whatever right, right, reason, right, right, in yeah, the first sure. game, they only would call it Europe. And I guess Luis Europe. is also fucking there, too. They only would call it Europe. I don't understand why they refuse to just say Spain. Mm. I don't know what part of Spain looks like New England like that. <laughs> I'm <laughs> right. sure there is a part like that. I'm yeah. not aware of it. But for whatever reason, they won't just say it's Spain. I don't get it. But, like... I mean, maybe they learned their lesson after setting RE5 just in the general location but, of Africa. But that was <laughs> after... No, I mean, since then, they're not talking about it now. I mean, they didn't. I, like, I guess they didn't what? talk about it then either, no, did they? They just no. said Europe. All right, so our gripes with the story aside, the two things I'm most psyched for is one, the fact that they seem to make a real effort to make it scarier and lean into the horror aspect of it, which is one of my favorite things. And two, the fact that the stealth additions look like they might stand uh, to really alter the fundamental gameplay that's available, I think that's fucking cool. Bobby, two things that you think are very noteworthy or what you're what you like I the definitely most. I think the parry system for me, you know, rather than being I'm not as interested in stealth, but I'm interested in getting into these heavy combat scenarios where I think the parry system has the potential. Well, I mean you are the Dark Souls player right, among us. So. Right, exactly. I think this could improve those interactions and make it so I can get in these motherfuckers' faces a little more and have a little more options for how, how I go about these interactions and smash through these waves of enemies. And two? Um, from this video, I mean, again, two is definitely just, I the, their, their philosophy and their attitude towards the game, they clearly love it, and they clearly are coming at this with really the right attitude. And that, to me, is what's going on behind the scenes. It's somewhat of a minor miracle in today's video game amazing. climate, I would say. Like, so. I, don't, I don't feel like there's, like, there's clearly some real old-school gaming game dev love to this, and that's exciting. That it says it's in really good hands, and that uh, it's good. they're going to take what made it good and make it better, and what is dated, they're going to remove, and that's cool. All right. We'll see. Hopefully, the demo will be out soon, and we can check it the fuck out. What do y'all think? Drop it in the comments down below. Were we too hard on them? Were we not hard on them enough? Do you think this is going to be awesome? Do you think it's going to suck? Do you not care? Fuck Capcom? Let us know. We love you today. We love you all the way. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Peace, motherfuckers. <laughs> Chuck, chuck, woke up, smoke up, blood, then I'm pass out, pass, pass out, huh? Woke up, what up, smoke up, blood, then I'm back down, back, back down, what? Yup, yup, woke up, smoke up, blood, then I pass out, pass, pass out, huh? Woke up, what up, smoke up, blood,